Hi, Victoria. Hi, Ruby. Nice to meet you. Hi, Lewis. Good to see you. How are you doing? Good. Good. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah. I just have to explain a few little technical yeah. issues. We're all, yeah. We're all ready to go now. So, if you just want to follow me, that's the way. Hi, Hi. 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 Go-karting to Formula One, the London teenagers hoping to follow in the footsteps of Sir Lewis Hamilton and get his advice. The problem with our sport is that it is expensive, but there are a lot of people out there, companies that are looking for improving uh, diversity and inclusion. Good evening and welcome to the programme. I'm Victoria Hollins. Two London teenagers who, despite the odds, are determined to become Formula One racing drivers. Ruben and Lewis have been go-karting since they were young and met at the same racetrack where Sir Lewis Hamilton spent his early years. They've been sharing their stories with the BBC and they were recently invited to Mercedes headquarters to meet their hero, the seven times Formula One world champion. Let's have a look. Obstacles that you faced during your career how have you really overcome them? I think the biggest uh, difficulties were the difference in race, obviously being the only person of colour on the track, apart from my dad. There's a lack of diversity through the top of uh, big, big, you know, organisations, companies, all the way down, right down to the bottom. And there's very, very little uh, black leadership, so I put this commission together to try and find out what those barriers are for young underserved communities trying to get into this sport. Why are they not applying to jobs? Why are they not feed, being fed from the university? And then also like people from, particularly from like African and, and Caribbean heritage, their parents, because they don't see anybody here that looks like them, they never ever say that's somewhere you could be. Yeah. What do you think needs to be done to help people like us take that step up in terms of maybe funding and what training, stuff like that? Well, the problem with our sport is that it is expensive. Yeah. But there are a lot of people out there today, companies that are looking for improving uh, diversity and inclusion. There's a lot of companies out there that want to be partnered with the right message. So it's not just what you do on track, but it's also how you present yourself as a family, how you handle yourself when you lose. But I really just want to encourage you guys, you know, there's nothing that you cannot do. I wish you guys all the best. Thank you very Thank you much. much. And um, yeah. I hope things go well for you soon and all the best for the race. Thank you. Well, uh, Lewis and Ruben came into the studio earlier this afternoon. I began by asking them if they really had been born to race. I've always been a competitive person. I mean, I've been into racing since the age of three. I uh, used to love playing racing games with my dad's uh, PSP. So I think that's where the love for racing really started. So ever since then, I've just been my goal to make it into F1. And, and Ruben, give us an idea of the kind of commitment that it requires in terms of sort of the time really more than anything because it, it is a huge commitment to the sport it isn't is it? it's, it's very uh, time consuming you have to sacrifice a lot of social life um, but it doesn't really feel like a sacrifice to me because it's something that I love doing but for anyone that doesn't really have a passion for it it would be like you're crazy to spend that much time or effort into it but I love it. And these films have followed you throughout uh, for a year of training and what's happened to you. Tell us about what you experienced in that time. So the start of the year, we started off just getting our professional license, which allowed us to drive in the Pragas. And that was a really fun experience, get to drive a lot of different cars, um, which is a jump from karting, obviously a lot faster, a lot more expensive. Um, but it got us used to the format of a race weekend. Um, how to handle different cars and it sort of put us in the position that we are today really. And um, I think you met back in 2011 wasn't it that you, that you met and I think in, in the film uh, uh, Lewis you say um, it, it was rare to see another person of colour on track. Um, has that sort of shared experience been, been a useful one for both of you would you say? Yeah I definitely say so I mean uh, we met on my first race meeting so yeah I was surprised to see him there but um, I think he came second so <laughs> Since it was my first race, I was like, yeah, that's what I want to be doing, so, yeah. And what about you, Ruben? Yeah, it was, um, it was something new, because I've been in the sport a little bit longer, um, and seeing no one else of colour on the grid, it was like, oh, there is someone else. Uh, obviously, looking up to Lewis Hamilton the whole of my career, it was nice to have someone that I'm actually racing with, you know, that also looks like me, and that we can share our journey with as well. 
well and absolutely that's what you did isn't exactly. it you met and spent time with uh, Sir yeah. Lewis Hamilton what was what was that like and what did you most take away from that meeting it was very surreal um, obviously looking up to someone your whole life being able to meet them and talk to them properly for 30 minutes it was yeah it was crazy I think what I took away from it it wasn't necessarily from a driving perspective but it was life lessons um, how to better yourself off track as well um, even last night I was in the gym until 1am because I thought I haven't been to the gym in two days I need to get my three three times a week in and I just had Lewis in the back of my mind just telling me about staying dedicated um, and motivated as well so it's something that you can transfer throughout all aspects of life um, family wise as well mm. and those little improvements in yourself is what makes you a great racing driver as well. Mm. So. Uh, and, and Lewis, what did you most take away from meeting your namesake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just uh, more or less um, backed up uh, what we, in a way, think um, we should be doing uh, to take that step up. So it's just mainly giving us advice on um, just staying focused and telling us that education is important, stuff like that. So yeah, it was it was great to meet him. I mean, having looked up to him since he started um, in 2007, it was it was surreal to see him. So finally, what does the, f the perfect future hold for you both? I think the dream for any, F for any driver would be F1. Um, that's the perfect dream for me, which I'm not going to stop until I get there. Um, I do love GT racing as well. So I'm enjoying the journey that I'm going on. I'm not just looking at the destination and thinking I can't look anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But I know where I want to be, which is F1. And it's just having people back us, having sponsors on board as well. and making that dream, dream come true for the both of us. And the same for you, Lewis, I imagine. You're really focused on, on that goal. Yeah, of course. I mean, any, F, um, any racing driver will want to make it into F1. I mean, if they say they're not, then they're lying. So, yeah, um, until it's impossible for me to make it into F1, that's going to be the goal. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't mind doing any other professional racing. I mean, racing's my life. So, yeah, that's, that's the dream. Well, Lewis and Ruben there and good luck to them. And you can see uh, the full report this evening on We Are England on BBC One. That's at eight o'clock or you can watch it and the entire series online by going to the BBC iPlayer.